Now, another approach, and by the way, as we go along, if you have questions, just jot them down, please, and bring them along to class tomorrow, and we will seek to respond to your questions. I really want to do that. <clears throat> another approach uh, to the question of uh, God and the religions is called relativism. Relativism means to say that each culture and society makes its own rules in regards to values. There's no universal values. Each society makes its own rules about values and its own belief system. As we get into Hinduism, you will discover that that is the Hindu understanding. Hinduism is deeply committed to relativism because it says every caste forms its own values and understandings, and those values and understandings are absolutely authoritative for that caste, but do not apply to other castes. So each caste system has its own system of beliefs and values. In fact, in one of the Hindu scriptures called the Bhagavad Gita, we are commanded to choose any god you want to choose and worship that god. So not only do the castes choose which gods they will worship, but each individual is free to choose his own god and worship his own god. Hinduism is what we say dogmatically relativistic, insisting that every society, every culture, has the authority to form its own values and systems and to worship whatever god it wants to choose. This is dogmatic relativism. How do we respond to that approach? It's exceedingly popular around the world today, this Hindu notion that every culture, every society makes its own values and makes its own religion and should be respected, that there's no universal truth, there's no universal god, there's no universal values. We simply, uh, all of us, live in a pluralistic world with no authority beyond my own culture, my own society. That's a very popular idea, particularly in the United States. And judging from what I experienced at Lithuania Christian College, it's also very significant in your region of the world as well. What is a Christian response to that? A Christian response to relativism. When I lived in Tanzania, uh, there was a tribe called the Jita tribe. The Jita believed that when a baby, when twins were born, that this was an omen of bad luck from the ancestors, that the ancestral spirits were not happy about twins, and they would bring bad omen, bad, bad bad situation upon the family that had twins. And so whenever twins were born, they would take these twins out into the bush and leave them under a thorn tree somewhere for the hyenas to eat that night, to kill and to eat. That's what they did. And they believed that was right. That's what their culture told them was the way you should do. And it was supported by the ancestors. So their religion, and their understanding of right and wrong and the value system revolved around that practice of abandoning the twins to the hyenas. It might make the mother extremely sad. She may weep and weep about that. And so my friends who are relativists, I say, so, so, so? Was that the right thing to do? Well, if you go to, this tribe was called the Jita tribe. If you go to the Jita tribe today and you ask about that question, every Jita on earth would say that's wrong. Our ancestors got it wrong. They thought that twins are a bad omen and should be killed, but it's wrong. And then they will say, thanks be to God for the gospel that came to our tribe and taught us that twins are created in God's image just as is true of everyone else and should be cared for and loved <laughs> and not abandoned to the hyenas. And so we have abandoned that practice. It's not part of our culture anymore at all. We have left it. 
because it's wrong, you see. So if you were to speak to any Jita today, he would say, no, I don't accept relativism. I don't accept that what our ancestors decided was right about twins back there many centuries ago, many generations ago, was right. I don't believe that. That there is a universal law which supersedes our tribal customs and that universal law comes from God who created us in his own image. And so, no, we don't practice things like that. We don't do that. We've left it be, you see. And I think with our friends that you all know, who are relativists, it's very important to enter into a careful conversation with them about what that means. When William Carey, the first Protestant missionary to India, arrived in India, he was extremely disturbed by seeing widows committing suicide when their husbands died. And his, just shortly after he arrived in India, there was this mother with, I think it was seven children, and her husband had died. And while the children are crying their hearts out because their mother needed to commit suicide, um, but the tribes, the caste system says it must be. The whole spiritual and religious atmosphere said it must be. And so this widow stood up and ran into the fire, a uh, great big fire, and she was burnt up with her husband in that fire, burnt up alive by her, and her children weeping and weeping. And Carrie stood, on, uh, stood up and he started to preach. He says, don't do that, don't do that. On what authority would he say don't do that? On what authority? On the authority of biblical revelation. He says, the Bible reveals, God has shown that we're created in his own image. And therefore, the woman, the widow, is equally precious to God as her husband. All are equally created in God's image. And so this widow suicide business is wrong. It must be dealt with. It must be abrogated. Again, what's his authority? Not Western culture, no. His authority was biblical revelation upon which he stood as he proclaimed the evil of this practice of widow suicide. And slowly, 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 the Hindus began to hear that. Oh, they said. So there's a word from the Bible which critiques this, that says we're created in God's image. We didn't know that before. Hey, if that's true, then we better start changing our culture. And so it was Hindus who worked with William Carey at bringing about an eventual transformation of that practice in India. And today it is against the law for a widow to commit suicide when her husband dies. On what authority was that changed? On the authority of biblical revelation. God created Adam and Eve in his own image. And therefore, the man and the woman equally in God's image and equally to be respected, you see. Again, so often I think as Christians, we sort of back up when people talk to us about this relativistic philosophy. We say, well, yes, 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 that's pretty good. Actually, examine it very closely. Where does it take us? when we believe that every culture and every society has the authority to form its own gods and to, practice and to develop its own value system irrespective of the rest of humanity and irrespective of God's revelation to us. That there is a word from God that goes beyond our culture, that goes beyond our belief systems, a word from beyond us, which is a universal word of truth, which we seek to proclaim, as William Carey did there in India, crying out, don't let the widows be, uh, 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 commit suicide, for they are creating God's image just as is true of the men. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. And so when we think of relativism and you're looking for a religious philosophical system to support relativism, uh, Hinduism comes to the top, I think. Hinduism, as I said, is, is dogmatically relativistic. Now, other philosophies are relativistic, too. I don't mean only Hinduism. But Hinduism, in, in, as no other religion, I think, uh, is built upon 
a solid commitment to relativism. Hindus will say to me, oh, Schenck, um, so you believe in three gods, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Very nice, very nice. We love Jesus. We love Christianity. That is so nice, so nice, so nice. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, no problem. We really like what you say. But you know, Hinduism, much, much better. In Hinduism, 500 million gods, not just three like Christianity. 500 million gods, much better, much bigger. All gods belong in Hinduism. Many, 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 many gods. Choose the one you want. No problem. Trinity, no problem. But many other gods too. Dogmatic relativism, you know. And the god of the gaps, I would say, is, is uh, if I were to put a philosophy beside that, I would say scientism. A philosophy that embraces scientism science as the ultimate authority, with no other authority really having authority apart from science. Uh, that's what the professor was teaching in the class, that science is the authority that deals with the question mark. There's no other authority that supersedes science. That's what he was teaching in his class on the philosoph philosophical foundation of Western culture. And so scientism would, ex would uh, embrace this kind of a worldview, and for Hinduism, would embrace this relativism. I think this is why in Western culture, Hinduism is so popular nowadays, because Western culture finds a lot of attraction with relativism, which means I or my family, my clan, my people, are the ultimate uh, uh, creators of God and of our values and so forth. There's no one can, no universal value. Uh, that sort of conviction is very, very prevalent in Western culture. And uh, Hinduism uh, provides a philosophical orientation to support that kind of commitment. Yeah.